What's up guys, today we're doing another very highly requested deck on the channel. It is Ice Rider Palkia. A lot of you guys have been asking for Ice Rider plus Palkia. It's a deck that I've tested personally a little bit, not a ton of, but here is my working list, where I am with it, and what my thoughts are on the deck as a whole. We'll talk about matchups, we'll talk about all that stuff, um, and I think there's a lot of valuable information for someone who's coming in about card counts, why I think some of these should be in here, why they shouldn't. So, um, at the very least, if you guys could do me a solid and hit that subscribe button, I'd appreciate it a ton. If not, well, I'll just be really sad. So, here we have Ice Rider Palkia. Um, Ice Rider Calyrex has two things going for it right now. Ride of the High King for two colorless is 10 plus 30 for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. We don't care about that. We care about Max Lance for two waters, or 10 plus 120 for each energy we discard this way. Uh, we go 250, Choice Belt 280. And with quick shootings, we can kind of supplement any missing damage. Until now, Ice Rider Calyrex has not really seen too much play because V V Maxes are a little bit too big for us to deal with. But V Stars, like Palkia, happen to be the perfect number at 280. With two energy and a choice belt, we can one shot that and um, kind of take four prizes for the three that we'd be giving up with the Calyrex. Um, and, and the game plan is like very simple, very straightforward. So. Um, it's becoming a much better card in this format. I think people are not playing as much of it. I think people are kind of moving past it. Yes, I know Dialga has been doing a lot better recently, popularity-wise. And if that happens, well, it's really unfortunate because it's a weakness for us. But yeah, there's three baby Ice Rider Vs. It's a 3-3 line. I think um, that might be the right number. It might, we might need to bump it up to a 4. But I feel like Ice Rider Calyrex is not like the best of starters. Um, there's not that many really good starters in this deck, actually. Um, so we just pierce... Uh, and kind of get set up and do whatever, like turn one Pierce into turn two Lance, whatever like that. And we also have a 2-2 Palkia line, um, so we can use the subspace well attack. Um, your bench is almost always going to be full, so we're going to be hitting for at least 160 on our end, 190 with Choice Belt. Uh, and then Star Portal is going to be the main reason why the Palkia is in the deck, also to cover a little bit of typing. I think Star Portal is really cool because Ice Rider has always had a problem being way too linear. Ice Rider is so telegraphed in what it's going to do. You're going to Melanie every turn, you're going to Max Lance, and then if you get hit, all of a sudden you're in a lot of trouble because you can't heal and attack in the same turn. So players in the past have tried Frost Last. Players in the past have tried um, playing Cross Switcher in the deck. Like a lot of different things have made their way into these Palkia, or not Palkia, Ice Rider decks to kind of supplement the fact that you can only do one thing per turn and you discarding your own energies actually hurts a ton. But here we have Palkia. Enter the dra dragon? Centaur? I don't know. Enter the horse. He's got a really cool ability that gets us three energy back in the same turn. So now we can heal in the same turn. We can boss in the same turn. We can research in the same turn. We can rock sand in the same turn. We can do whatever we want and star portal in the same turn to set up an Ice Rider and a Palkia. Now, Ice Rider also reads a little bit interestingly, interestingly, so you don't have to discard all energy or anything. It's up to two. So you can put like four energies on this bad boy and just say like, okay, I'm going to discard two this turn and two next turn. Like, what are you going to do about it? So Palkia becomes a great secondary option and a great homie to our horse. Um, and now to back up our line, we've got our 4 3 one, one Inteleon line. Quick Shooting is there to supplement damage, and Shady Dealings is there to just let us set up. Shady Dealings is objectively better in this deck, but I think you need the Quick Shooting simply because our damage does not reach high enough in a lot of scenarios. So we want to make sure we just have this to cover all of our bases, theoretically. We have the Radiant Halucha, so with Big Match, we can hit 3D more damage on the VMAXs. And there's only one really relevant VMAX, which is Mew. Um, so if we can get to that 310 magic number, we can knock out Mew VMAX. I know what you're thinking. Or a Choreo exists. That's not great for us. What do we do? That's where we have the um, Inteleon to come in and get the ping with the Temple of Sinnoh. Rounding out that matchup right there. And then we can go for like a boss player or something like that. We have one Crobat because our early game is so pivotal. Or like a mid-game turn where we need to just draw a bunch of cards and like get to the actions that we want to take. Um, so making sure we just get to play the game is really important with Crobat. Um, so really, I really like having a card like Crobat and deck like this to give us extra dig. Um, because we're only playing three copies of Pal... Or Three copies of Ice Rider, I put in his shoe and heavy ball to start us off because I think also having Sable Prize is really detrimental and having a Palkia Prize is really detrimental as well. So being able to access any of these three cards that are prized or this Halucha um, is really important. I have two copies of Incense, three Level Ball, two Ultra Ball, and four Quick, which is our general um, consistency engine that we've run in almost a lot of Inteleon decks. Obviously, I would like another Incense if possible, but the list is really, really tight, so we're going to have to keep it there right now. We have two copies of Scoop Up Net, two copies of Capacious Bucket. Um, I would like a third bucket as well, just because I think water is so important in this deck, but I would probably put in the eighth water over the third bucket 
uh, when it comes to at the beginning. I have one copy of Ordinary Rod that could also be a Nessa. I currently have it as a rod so we can kind of flex it around a little bit and figure out um, do we need Pokemon in this situation or energy in this situation or can we just like throw them back in rather than burning a supporter for the turn? But I know that Nessa has been very popular in these water type decks because you can pick up your whole deck basically with it um, and get some waters back, which is just like crazy, crazy good. So I would rather, but I'm thinking in my mind, like what I rather want to have the rod to get the shady dealings back and use shady dealings in the same turn for a different supporter or rod back the quick shooting. I don't know. Like, you know, I want to have multiple options. So rod is currently where my mind is at, but I think Nessa is also completely fine. Palpad is also very, very good. Um, to get back some of our one ofs, our you know that kind of stuff. We have three or two path to the peak because I think path is one of our best ways of beating Mew because I think a lot of decks are still very very much so faster than you. So we need to be able to slow them down to an extent that we get to play the game, um, and that's very crucial. We have one copy of Temple of Sinnoh because we do need to be able to deal with um, Mew and get that one shot. Uh, it's simply just for the one shot. I think you could flex these numbers around, go two one in some regard because maybe two Temple is just better when we want to one shot Mews all the time and if Mew becomes bigger. Um, so yeah, two copies of boss, which is completely fine with the pal pad already existing. One copy of Cheryl here is something that's very interesting. I've tried stuff like Frost Last Sydney, Frost Last um, Flannery, Frost Last Cheryl in the past, and it's felt a little bit underwhelming because you need to get that evolution on that exact turn to use that supporter all in tandem. But with Palkia, you can just have a Palkia set up, um, find your Cheryl on the turn you need it with the, um, Intellion Engine, Cheryl, use Ast or Star Portal, and all of a sudden your board is set up perfectly the way you want it to go. Um, so yeah, that's why I like Cheryl a lot in this deck. Uh, healing is something that this deck has never had the option to do so, and giving us the option to heal is something that I wanted for a very long time. Now, Cheryl could be better as probably anything else, maybe, I don't know, but I am a huge fan of Cheryl. We play three copies of Melanie because it is our primary draw. We need to just kind of set up our board. Um, you could also just be playing two Melanie and another draw supporter, which I think is also completely fine. Maybe two Melanie and a Marnie. Um, I have one copy of Research and one copy of Roxanne. Um, if you want a second draw supporter, it would always be Cut a Melanie for a Marnie, probably, um, because we still have Star Portal to access. And then I have the Roxanne to kind of Roxanne path in the late game. Uh, two Choice Belts. Very, very strong card. Um, I think just probably one of the best. Um, cards in this deck, like everything in the deck can utilize it very well. And then seven waters. I'd love an eighth water, but I think seven waters is really, really good as well. Um, but this is my early take on the list. I think Mew is a fine matchup. It's one of our hardest for sure. Arceus is very favored. Um, Palkia Mirror, I think, is unfavored just because they can get to some of these magic numbers that we can't get to sometimes. Um, and Palkia also feels really scary in what they can do consistency wise. Uh, but I think it should be even or only slightly unfavored. Um, Gigas is probably really bad. Um, what other matchups are there? Uh, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but if you think of a matchup in the comments, let me know. I will answer it for you. Uh, but this is the deck that I think has a lot of potential and is being slept on right now. I would like to put more time and effort into it, so you might see me bring this or some iteration of this to a future tournament. So, hope you guys enjoyed the content. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you later.